did God put on your heart to, to get to, to launch this ministry? I, I am Sejour Saint Victor. I always call myself like a rescue one. Because in this community, so not many people got a chance to go to the town for high school. When I finished my elementary here, I, I was born here in this mountain. So when I finished this uh, elementary school, so I had a chance to go to the town to, for high school. That's why I call myself a rescue one. Not many people got that chance. So when I finished my high school and uh, I went to law school, uh, get a license in law school, I, I also study like education and go to seminary too. In 2006, 2006, I was called to come back here just to help. So when I received the call, I asked God, is that really true? Because this community used to be a voodoo community. Like if you are educated, you come here, so you can be killed. Because voodoo people, they like people who can't read, who are always really poor. But if you got education, so they can kill you for nothing. But I received the call, I pray, I, I don't feel I can come because it's hard to come back. The word and everything is a mess. I was in the town. So I come here and try to share that with my parents. They are still alive here in this mountain. When I go to my parents and, and say, so I am called to get back here to work and uh, they get very upset. Because most people here, when they are educated, their parents try to send them in France, in the US, for a better life, to send money back to the family. They say, why? I spent my money for you to go in the town to help us, and you, you decide to come back to become poor? And I say, okay, and I go back to the town, I keep praying, and I see it was, good for me to come back but it was not a it was not very easy for us when we just come back in this property no house nothing and no money to build church and we, we start praying in the field and uh, after we, we 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 let kids come in the ground we started with uh, 13 kids feed them when we come, we pray and feed them. And uh, I, as I, I am a teacher, I got like a little salary. So with that little salary, we try to feed the kids and we build this little church and we start school. So in 2019, uh, nine, so we met, uh, this family, I always call them like uh, special people. Like by example, the first time I took them to the to gas, so all people there they were afraid of Mrs. Darling because it's their first time they see blanc, and uh, it was very tough for Mrs. Darling too. The fact that they have a God heart, she decided to go up there, no toilet, nothing, and so God protect her. And it was very bad for her, lay down in the ground, very tired, almost died, but she went there, and we start this ministry. Praise God, you've seen some things. So talk about your role and your involvement with Mount Sinai Mission Ministries here in uh, Baronese. Yeah, now I am, I am pastor of the church and uh, also the founder of this ministry. 
we are working together with uh, uh, with you guys in the states and as uh, with your support to give a better life to the people here and uh, to bring them to God too. That's what we're doing. So as the founder and the pastor, you do everything, whatever, whatever has to get done, you wear lots of hats? I am like everything here. <laughs> Sometime pastor at the church on Sunday and Wednesday. Praise God, right now we have, uh, we have another pastor coming and we help him go to seminary too, to become uh, better. Uh, he's a good Christian, good heart, Pastor Shelo. So he helps at the church. Now I have some other people with me right now, but before I was like teacher, uh, principal, and pastor, director of the orphanage, everything. Yeah. That's good. So how do you describe the vision or the mission or the heartbeat of this ministry? <clears throat> uh, someone said, if you are planning for a decade, you plant like rice, corn, uh, trees. But if you have to plan for a lifetime, you plan, you plan, you plant people, like education. So that's why we are here. We used to be a, a place uh, where nobody care, like the government doesn't know if people here, they exist. That's why we have uh, 70,000 people living in this community. Even uh, a police station we don't have. Even a clinic we don't have. So that's now we, with this ministry, we plant uh, on, the, on, the, on the kids. Now at the orphanage, we have uh, our first kids who used to be in, at the orphanage learning engineering. We also have one in Port-au-Prince uh, learning like doctor to become a doctor. So that's why we we plant education so that we can change this community. Awesome. How is the Lord using this ministry to share the gospel? Talk about evangelism. But I have to thank, uh, to say thank you to people in the States like that. Because technology, technology here, not many people got a good phone to, to find the Bible. So we got a project to, to put Bible in the hands of the people at the church. We have some friends like Mr. Eve, Mr. Lyle, and some other American people. They give us like Bible and help us buy songbook. So now some people, they have their Bible. So on Wednesday, we, we used to, to organize like Kusid, invite people to come to the Kusid and preach them the gospel. So some, some people in Voodoo now, they send their kids in school they also send their kids in a church. They say, I don't want you to become a voodoo priest like me. I want you to be like Pastor St. Victor, like some other people. So many change right now in this community. More than 90% uh, right now is uh, Christian. Praise God. Talk about discipleship. How is the Lord using this ministry to make disciples? Talk about what discipleship means. Well, we have uh, a group of ladies at our church. So after we teach them how to go out to reach people, so every Wednesday they go outside and uh, to preach. And when they preach people, some of them accept Christ and they pray for them and uh, they come to our church sometime, and they go to other church. It's a kind of uh, evangelization we have all the time. So talk about Christian education. There's certain things that, you know, discipleship, learning how to follow Jesus, being obedient, talk about that. Uh, like at, at the school, as a Christian school, 
we we take an hour sometimes as principal i i do that and meet all the kids together and uh, tell them how they have to obey to their parents and to god make them uh, memorize a verse in the bible so at the church too we got sunday school in the morning one hour and uh, make them memorize the verses and uh, talk about salvation something like that before we have uh, uh, worship service and so on. Very good. Talk about ways people can get involved and support Mount Sinai ministry here in Barony. As uh, founder of this ministry, I have to say we are very grateful to people in America. I also, I always put that on Facebook because we were like in the ground. Now, with their helps, God put us a little high, because I can say that. So we couldn't feed our kids uh, once, but now we can feed them like twice. We would love to, to feed them like three times, but we feed them like twice. But one time, it was just me coming with rice and beans. So now they got like, Sometimes chicken, sometimes sardine, sometimes fish. So because of your support. What I can ask for now is uh, Mount Sinai ministry in Bayonne is not about me as pastor or founder. It's about God. It's, uh, it's the field of God. So we welcome everybody here. Welcome, everybody. Please, if you can come. So your presence here is uh, always a blessing. I say kids enjoy while you are here. It's a little different in, in our culture. Sometimes parents here, they love kids, I know, but laugh, spend time is not something easy. So, but when you are here, like you share the love, it's a big, big blessing. So anyone is uh, welcome. It's a non-denominational. It's not a question of Baptist or Church of God. It's uh, people who love God and who love kids. So welcome to any people. So we also, I know that prayer is all about. So keep praying for Mount Sinai Ministries, especially uh, the situation we, we, we are now in Haiti. So everything is like a mess, gang, uh, own safety, no hospital, nothing and so on. No gasoline. So your prayer is very important. So in everything we have here, like church, school, orphanage, in whatever we are doing, we want like Christ-centered. Christ-centered. So Christ is supposed to be there first. That's why we <clears throat> organize at the, at the orphanage prayer uh, 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 all the time with the kids and we also organize Bible study with them even at the school and so everything is uh, Christ first. Uh, yeah, as I said, uh, we welcome every missionary. I said we are non-denominational. So everybody is welcome. If you love Christ and you love uh, people, you are welcome anytime here. It's not a question of Baptist mission, something like that. It's uh, just Christ ministry. So everyone is uh, welcome. Good. Yeah. Why do you do what you do? We're involved in this ministry, as I told you. It's, it's from God. It's just a call. It's not my own. Because my own, like my family, so they didn't want me to be here. So I am called to make a difference in the life of people here by preaching them the gospel 
feed, feeding them and educate them. So that's why we are here. And by myself, it was, uh, we started very bad, but with some support, that's why we welcome everybody to put hands together to see how we can bring more people to God and change life. Change life. Very good. Yeah. Final question. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us today? Yes. So I have to, to thank everybody who are praying for us and uh, who listen to us who contribute to make that happen. So one day, God will say I was hungry, so you fed me. So I was homeless, you give me shelter to stay. So thank you again for what you have been doing. And I have to tell you, it's not about me, it's not uh, my ministry as founder because I was called to come here. So it's God's ministry. Everybody is welcome to make a difference in the life of people here. So our Haitian government, what you do, our Haitian government. So they consider us people here. That's why I call myself rescue. So they consider people here like a redneck. They don't care about us. No wood for 70,000 people live, no policemen, no clinic. So I remember one day, uh, Mr. Lyle brought a team of uh, nurses coming here. They, they treat many people here. So they get uh, hurt with a machete, something like that, get very bad, no antibiotic. So. Those people from the state uh, heal them. So your support is very important. Again, anybody is uh, welcome and anytime. And we are very, very grateful to you. And you make big, big difference in the life of people here. Emmanuel, we have in Port-au-Prince. So he would never even finish uh, elementary school. So we can talk about going to Port-au-Prince, sending him like money for him to go to, to pay taxi is more than 300 US every month. So you sent. Nobody can do it here for him. So that happened just because of your support. Thank you again for what you have been doing and anybody is uh, welcome. We are very grateful to you. Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome.